James talked about your ability to connect with the players. How big of a part of that is that with your coaching approach, and how are you able to connect with the players in, in a big way like you do? Well, I think I'm younger than them sometimes until I start running, and then everything starts breaking down. But no, I, I think when you develop the relationship with them in the recruiting process, and and you make sure that you continue that relationship through the recruit from the recruiting process to the coaching part, and you never change. You know, I, I was crazy when I recruited them, and I'm crazy when when I, when I coach them here now. But uh, I try to tap into their lives outside of football. I think it's important for us to do that as coaches. I think any time that you have a player that you recruited and the parents entrusted you in, in, in the lives of them, that you have, you have to take a great responsibility to that. And, you know, it, I've, always, I've always felt like I've had a really good knack to that. You know, I, I, you know, as you know, you guys heard the story. You know, I grew up and I'm a father, and I think this is probably my gift. Do you think Etor has grown as a leader, you know, throughout the spring and throughout the offseason? Right, so Etor is a quiet leader. He's not going to say a whole bunch. Um, half the time, you ever guys watch Heat Cliff and Heat Cliff talk, the thing will go over his head. You know, I, he doesn't say anything; he just looks at you. But he's such a he's such a um, a go hard guy on the field that he leads by example. He doesn't have to say anything. When I turn on the film and I want to tell Jason Oway, this is how you practice, and Etor's running sideline to sideline and not taking a playoff. That's being lead, that's being a leader in itself, you know. So you have vocal leaders, and you have guys that lead by example. So you know, it's not just that he makes plays; it's his approach. His approach is full speed go all the time. What you guys see on the on the game field, and what that guy does in, in practice is the exact same thing. You mentioned Jason. Has he made the kind of strides you were hoping for this yeah, offseason? Yeah, I mean, you got to remember now, Jason only played. Uh, this is going to be his fourth year of football, yeah. right? So. Um, you know, his his change from last season, right about around the bowl practices, it started like the switch started hitting for him. And then all of a sudden now, you know, you talk about a guy that's 6'4", 6'5", 260, running 4'4", is starting to transfer over. On the field. He's a problem off that edge. I mean, he it's scary when he comes off that edge. And I'm happy about his progress mentally too. You know, I think at first he was taking a picture of things. You know, it was things were just happening. Would take a snapshot of it instead of just going. Um, so he's really taking some big steps. James mentioned that Judge and Damian things have maybe clicked a, a bit for them this yeah. spring. And you have mentioned how hard it is to make that transition from gaining the weight and staying coordinated. Uh, things you, you feel like both of them are trending in the right direction towards yeah, impacting the, yeah. on the field, and then. With Judge, when he's when you have a father who's the ten year NFL veteran at the position, how much is juggling, you know, what dad's telling him versus what you're telling him as a coach? I mean, is he hearing it from two sides, obviously? No, I will tell you a funny story in the recruiting process. One of the things that that why Judge chose Penn State was his he and I's dad his dad's connection with me. And his dad thought I was very in, in line with the way he was coached, you know. So he said, you know, he liked the, the terminology, he liked the way we, we coach our approach to the D-line play. I mean, his dad he knows a lot of football, and, and it is, it's great talking to him. And, yeah, sometimes I bounce ideas off him, you know, when I see my EO come up here and I talk to him. The guy's been in the league for 10 years. So I don't ever think there's any friction there with, with, with both of those uh, guys talking to him. Now, the other thing I'll say is that Damian and, and Judge have both just taken tremendous steps forward, you know, and another guy throwing in is Aeneas Hawkins. I mean, these guys have really just gone from A, A, A to B to C pretty quickly here in the spring, and that's what you want to get out of spring practice, right? You want to you want to get these younger guys, the older guys not to plateau and to keep going, and you want the younger guys to be viable in your rotation, and I think those two guys have done that.